Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I know that screencasts are all the rage. And uh, I like watching screencasts. I don't really do a lot of recording of screencasts. Um, I don't know. There's just something that feels so impersonal about a screencast. I like doing my video recordings live to tape. So they're not perfect, but I am able to incorporate the chat and you're able to see me. And if I'm demonstrating anything, it may be behind me on my screen. At some point, maybe software will allow me to do a live stream video cast. But right now, uh, there's no software that will do that. I know of one piece of software that will be able to do that at some point in the future, but uh, I'm not going to talk about that right now because I'm sworn to secrecy. Regardless, if you do screencasts, uh, I've got a top five list for creating a video tutorial, and this was submitted by Firebucket, uh, one of our community members at live.perillo.com, and he goes by the handle Firebucket in the chat room. I don't know if Firebucket's here right now, but if he is, go ahead and voice him. Uh, these are his top five uh, tips for creating video tutorials. Number one, if you're going to be demonstrating how to set up and install a program that you can download from the web, never ever show you actually downloading the program. You can give links, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and show yourself on the web page, but never download the program while recording. Download the programs that you're demonstrating to your audience and have them ready to go. Even better, install the software first because installation wizards will bore your audience to death, unless, of course, part of the process is showing people how to install something or something inside the install process. Number two, make it simple. Don't use words that your audience isn't going to know. If you have to, define it in an easy way that they can easily understand. For example, don't say something like, scaling your images down changes the pixel size. Say something like, scaling the image down makes the picture smaller, etc. You'll catch more people this way, and it'll sound like you really know what you're talking about, even if you don't. I think that was a slight to me, but I don't know. Number three, get a microphone and explain using your voice, not notepad or word. I've seen tutorial after tutorial explaining something that I really want to know, but then once the video starts, the tutorialer, it's a weird word there, tutorialer, person running the tutorial, <laughs> loses me by playing distracting music in the background and then slowly typing the instructions into a word processing program. This is slow and painful for your audience. They want to be able to hear you, not constantly go back and forth between the program feature you are demonstrating and notepad slowly typing up the instructions. This is really irritating. Number four, get proper screen capturing software. If you're willing to pay for good software, you can acquire something like TechSmith's Camtasia Studio, and you can find those links on my website at chris.perillo.com, by the way. If I, He says he's never used this, but from good video tutorials he's seen, they're pretty good. But there are also free open source alternatives out there. Cam Studio records an AVI or SWF. That's at camstudio.org. Um, he notes a couple of other ones. Oh, and he, he actually threw in here for a Mac. You could use I Show You, which, again, he's never used. It, uh, and he said he saw the output when I did my Wicked Pixie WordPress theme tutorial. He was impressed uh, with the output of that. And I, you know, I did my best with it, even though I, I probably could have done it a little better if I spent more time with it. Regardless, there's good software out there. Try the one that fits you best. Number five, make sure you put it somewhere that you will get an audience. Places like YouTube or Blip TV are great places that people go for looking for something to watch because they're bored or they need to find out how to do something. You'll get at least 50 to 100 viewers minimum, and maybe even a few subscribers, which can inspire you to become a regular video tutorialer. And even like Chris Perillo, with over 10,000 subscribers. There you go. Hope it helps the community. Firebucket. Thank you, Firebucket. Good tips, good guidelines. A lot of people do this, and they don't realize they're doing it. And I think you've coined a new word, tutorialer. Tutorialer? It's so difficult to say. It's easier to read. Um, but I am in complete agreement with you. These are uh, one, some of the reasons why I don't do a lot of screencasts. Because to do a good screencast, uh, you have to uh, do it well. And there's a lot of people not doing it well uh, these days. Uh, another thing that I, I might note as far as screencasts are concerned, um, one of the reasons why we publish to YouTube, but then I also make a corresponding blog post uh, thanks to the help of Kat at uh, uh, my website, chris.perillo.com, so you can read the show notes. Some people want to watch the video. Some people want the show notes. Uh, you can find both of them on chris.perillo.com. Even if you're watching the video on YouTube, every video that we've put on YouTube is also on my personal blog with extended notes uh, to possibly describe uh, whatever we're talking about a little further. I'll also have uh, these notes 
slightly edited and posted to the blog over there as well. Um, so you know you can get both, not just the the visual, but also the legible, I guess, readable. Boy, we're just throwing words around today, aren't we? I know one of his tips was use words that people could understand, but. Oh, we're just a bunch of geeks, and we love playing with software and hardware, and we're hanging out in this chat room right now. Uh, it accompanies my live video feed, which is pretty much always on. It's on right now, as a matter of fact. I mean, while I'm recording it, because I'm recording live to tape. Uh, and you can watch it on, on your screen if you want. You can watch me messing around with my screen if you want. I mean, it's sometimes it's exciting. You never really know what's going to happen, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do, any kind of bodily noise that, you know, may come from me at, you know, a random point during the day or night. Well, if you're uh, interested in talking tech, you're welcome to stop by. Say hello in the chat room. We're at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.